Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Quantity, Level 2, Physical Quantities. When you're starting to measure physical quantities, the first thing you always want to define is what's the system that I'm going to be investigating. You're all probably familiar with a quantity. A quantity is just like a number, so like one, two, three, those would all be quantities. Um, but we're not going to be just talking about quantities today, we're going to be talking about a physical quantity. And so the object that I use um, to really talk about quantities is this, it's a weight that you would put on a scale. So I could say, well there's a quantity of one of these, but that's not really a physical quantity. A physical quantity would be what's written on the bottom. It's like its mass, its height, it could be its density, and so those are going to be physical quantities. They're really properties of an object. Now after watching this video you should be able to measure physical properties of things like uh, time in an hourglass clock. You could also measure volume of the sand as it changes or even mass in a chemical reaction. I'll have some videos at the end. I'm going to show you how to measure some physical quantities in three different cubes and then we'll look at three different liquids and so let me get those out of the box. So the first thing we always want to do is define what are the objects or what is the system that we're going to investigate. So this, these three cubes, we'll call this cube one, cube two, and cube three, are going to be the system that I'm going to investigate, and I'm going to measure some of their physical quantities. So let me list out all the objects first. So the objects that I'm going to be investigating are metal one, uh, the wood, and then metal two. The next thing I have to decide is what physical quantity do I actually want to measure? And so one thing that I noticed when I was pulling them out is that they all had similar size. So they have a similar size scale, but that doesn't tell me what their actual volume is. So let me write that down. So the physical quantity that I'm going to measure is going to be the volume of each of these different objects. So anytime you have a physical quantity, you have two things that you have to remember. First you talk about the quantity, in this case it's going to be the volume, but we also want to talk about the unit. So the easiest way for me to measure the volume of these solids is just take length times width times height, and so that's going to give me the volume in centimeters cubed. And so when you're measuring physical quantities, you have to have not only a number, number, 1, 2, 3, or 1.2, but you also have to have the unit, um, because a number without a unit is worthless when it comes to a physical uh, quantity. So for me to measure this, there's a couple of ways that I could go at it. I could measure it with a ruler, so I could just kind of line this up with the ruler. That'd be one way to do it. Or if I want to be more precise, I could use a caliper, so it looks like this. So let me do that. I'm going to quickly measure each of these and then record their physical quantities in the space below. So that was pretty easy. Each of these, when I ordered them, are the exact same size. So they have the same dimensions. And so length, width, and height are 1.2. And so if I multiply those, I get 1.7 cubic centimeters. Uh, I didn't do this in my head. I did this earlier with the calculator. So now we've got a physical quantity. We've got the volume of the cubes, and then we've also got the unit that they're measured in. And so the next thing I might do is figure out, well, they all seem similar when it comes to volume, but I wonder what their weights are. In other words, uh, how many grams do they contain? So the physical quantity here is weight, or it could be measuring mass, and we're going to put that in grams. And so let me get a scale out and we'll measure that. Now that's something interesting. Even though they have the same volumes, uh, the wood weighs less than the other two metals, but this metal weighs a lot, 36.8 grams compared to 5.39. So you can see the importance of physical quantities. I'm communicating with you not only a number, but since you know what a gram is, then we can all share those physical quantities. Um, what else is kind of interesting when I was feeling them? 
They seem to have different temperatures, so maybe temperature would be an interesting thing. Um, we can use this, which is just an infrared thermometer, to measure that. So let me put down uh, temperature, and then we will record those physical quantities. All right, so that's physical quantities with these three cubes. I'm going to clean everything off, and then we're going to look at fluids. Um, how could we look in these liquids? Uh, what physical quantities might we measure? And then we're actually going to do it. Okay, I've cleaned off this space, and what I have next is uh, three liquids. One is blue, so I'll put this up here. We've got one that's green, and then we have one that is red. So first of all, let's define what the system is. So the system is these three liquids that we have in these different containers up here. And what I'd like to have you do next is start thinking about what physical quantities might we measure? And so you can use either the thinking slides down below or you could use just a piece of paper. I want you to set up essentially a data table where it has the parts of the system and then three physical quantities that we could measure. And then uh, after you unpause the video, you can come back and see how our thinking matches up. Okay, so the first thing you should have done is define the objects within the system. And the next thing you should decide are what are some physical quantities? What are some quantities that I could measure of these three liquids that might tell me a little bit more about the liquids themselves? So let me write down the three physical quantities that I came up with. Okay, so the three quantities I'm thinking about are the temperature, the volume in milliliters, temperature in degrees Celsius, and then weight in grams. And so I'm going to speed up the video a little bit and you'll be able to see me measuring some of these quantities. So the first thing I notice is that they have different temperatures, varying all the way from 11 degrees Celsius to around room temperature to warmer than temperature. Next thing I need to do is measure volume. And to measure volume, I would use a graduated cylinder. A graduated cylinder is a way to measure liquid volumes uh, versus just measuring it. It won't look that great under here to see me doing this, so you'll see me as we're going, moving my eyes down to the side so I can get a more accurate view of what the volume is. So let me speed up the video and let's get that. So the volume is different. So blue has a volume of 56 milliliters. Uh, green is around that, but red is going to have way less volume. Uh, the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the weight. Um, getting the weight of fluids is sometimes hard. So what I'll do is probably take the weight of an empty container. And then assuming these containers are all the same, I'll see what the difference is to calculate the weight. So the weight of the container is 14.4 grams. Okay, so the physical quantities that I measured of weight are uh, really close to the volume, if you look at that. So this is 56 milliliters, this is 56.8 grams. 51, 50.7, and 33, and 33.9. So 
It's not just coincidence, I was really careful in my measurements of both volume and weight, and so we're finding a relationship between those two. So what is a physical quantity again? It tells you not only what are we measuring, but what are the units that we're measuring and how much of it do we have. So I've done a lot of the work here uh, using my little makeshift lab, and so what I'd love to have you do is I've got a couple of videos. You could find these in the thinking slides down below. One, you'd be measuring time. So this is gonna be time in uh, uh, hourglass, but also we we have some volume or you could measure the mass in a chemical reaction and so uh, it's really important in science that we're accurate in our measurements of physical quantities so we can communicate what we've learned with other people so that's level two that's on physical quantities and I hope that was helpful